Beijing in 1985, still recovering from the Cultural Revolution. China was just opening up to the outside world, and it was here that a Hong Kong team managed by Kwok Ka Ming came to play a decisive FIFA World Cup qualifier. Thirty years ago, in 1985, China had only just started its reform and open policy. It was very different from the way it is now. It wasn't the first time I'd been to China. I went once in the 70s. So I knew about the developments that had taken place. But its reforms had only been going for six or seven years by 1985. And there have been many changes in the time since. China had reappeared in the qualifiers for the 1982 tournament after an absence of nearly a quarter of a century. And they'd nearly gone all the way to Spain. They were defeated by New Zealand in a playoff, but they'd made quite an impression. China came so close to reaching the finals of the 1982 FIFA World Cup. I think that team had a number of brilliant players, including Rong Jiahang, who was known as China's Pele. There were fast players with great control, like Gu Guangming. It was amazing that only the defeat against New Zealand stopped them going to Spain. Actually, that team had many great players. China were thus amongst the favourites to take one of the two Asian places on offer for Mexico 86. The first round group seemed easy enough, Macau, Brunei and Hong Kong. They needed only a draw from the final match at home to Hong Kong to go through to the next stage. Hong Kong needed a rather unlikely win, and on May the 19th, they stepped onto the field of the Workers' Stadium. Our players knew it would be a difficult game, but we also knew we needed nothing less than victory to qualify. The problem was there was no way we could keep the pressure on China for 90 minutes. We could only do it for 25, or maybe 30 at most. So our strategy was to play safe for the first half, and then we would attack them in the second period. But plans soon changed. With just 20 minutes on the clock, Hong Kong got a free kick well outside the box. When we scored first with that amazing free kick, I was happy, but I was also worried. The goal made me happy, but I also feared it might prompt our opponents to begin to attack us all the harder. China were rocked by Chung's goal, but soon regained their composure. A little over 10 minutes later, Li Hui equalised. That score would qualify China for the next round. But Hong Kong did have an advantage in terms of physicality. Defenders such as Ku Kam Fai were encouraged to go forward whenever they could. The second goal was a real scramble. But it was something that was actually part of our tactics. We had three big central defenders. And for each attack, we'd send one of them forward to help out. For the goal, it turned out that the lucky man was Kukum Fai. This was our special tactic. I think it's something that most people won't have realised, but I knew that we could score through one of our defenders. The Chinese needed another goal, and time was against them. They kept shooting from distance or launching long balls into the box to their strikers. It was something we'd expected. And because we had some excellent overseas players in our league, our defence was strong and we were used to dealing with such situations. China 1, Hong Kong 2. May the 19th is still a date that makes Chinese fans shudder. Hong Kong lost to Japan in the next round, but even now, almost 30 years on, the match in Beijing is still a proud memory. Kwok Ka Ming now works for the FA and has frequently been a member of FIFA's technical study group at major tournaments. Does he think Hong Kong could ever repeat their most famous performance? I think that if we can manage our resources wisely, then maybe our young people might recreate such occasions in the future.
These days, nations such as Japan, Iran and South Korea are considered the top teams in Asia. But think about it. Recently, Myanmar made it to the finals of the Under-20 World Cup. Even Japan and South Korea couldn't manage that. Now that suggests that there is still a way for the smaller nations to stand out. We used to be capable of things like that. I think it shouldn't be impossible for Hong Kong to return to the glory days at some point in our future.